the way I kind of submit talks for conferences. I just write the title and then I submit it. And like most of my talks, this is like three months ago. I thought this was a great idea. <laughs> and that, now standing here, I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, hi, uh, I'm Cristiano. Uh, I work at Hoopy. Uh, I'm a developer experience designer. I'm doing some of the training tomorrow. So for those of you who will be there tomorrow, uh, I'll, I'll see you there. Um, I do a certain kind of thing quite often on the internet where I'm a bit rude. Uh, and in this way, it's, it's kind of constructive rude. So one of the things I've been doing is I've been looking at different companies and how they do their onboarding and their, and their, um, their documentation and what it looks like. And the way I do that is I just try to onboard myself onto that platform and record that as a video and show people how that goes. So I've looked at SendGrid initially and that they, uh, they took it very, well, I didn't get beaten up by, by, by people over here. Uh, so I, I think that went relatively well. Everybody was always like, yeah, that was very good, very constructive. And I'm like in the background, like they're having a meeting somewhere going like, how can we shut this website down? Uh, GitHub could have done that because my website is actually hosted on GitHub. So they could have done that. Um, you know, I, I look at these things and it's mostly just me going, oh. So yeah, it's, it's mainly me just going like, where, where am I supposed to click? What am I doing? Uh, huh? well, mm. uh, I do a lot of editing to take those out, but sometimes I leave them in. Uh, I have a five-star rating system. Uh, there's actually a, a system behind it. Uh, there's um, Stripe was kind of almost flawless. A five-star would pretty much be like it's, it's completely flawless. Um, one star would be, you know, I didn't manage to make an integration work. Uh, I gave GitHub a, a harder than it should be rating, uh, which uh, sounds harsh, but they did, they did a pretty good job. It just was harder than it should be. So yeah, I'm a bit evil in that way. And my thought for this talk was, you know, I'm not trying to be a jerk. I'm trying to, I'm trying to kind of give people constructive feedback. Um, about usability. And if you're in my workshop tomorrow, we'll cover this in more detail. We'll cover kind of like what makes things usable, uh, what kind of UI makes things approachable, discoverable, predictable, correct, etc. cetera. Um, I like to explore those things. And I like to explore those things because when we have developers uh, on board onto our systems, we always have that idea of, of a developer, right? Developers look exactly like me. Right, and they, they onboard, and all they need is only the tools that I've ever needed. And um, they are already drinking the Kool-Aid and they know why our product is amazing. Where in realistically, if you talk about motivation and experience, um, developers are more likely to go a little bit more like that, where they become really motivated by your product and then they actually use it, and they become a little bit less motivated, but a little bit more experienced, and then they kind of like, get maybe motivated at some point again, and eventually they'll have an integration, but they'll be somewhere there in the picture. So that journey is a lot more kind of jagged than we think it would be. It's not, it's not a clean flow. So I want to highlight some bad UX, but I also want to kind of just show cool things that people have done. Now I have a system. Uh, there's three things that I look at. One is exploration, onboarding, and reference. Um, but this is not a presentation, and these are already a lot of slides. So we're gonna onboard, because this is a live API teardown, not a slide deck. So I will need a lovely assistant, Mike. Yes. Uh, so I have, um, I have a hat here, and there's three companies in here right now. There's in here, no, 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 don't pull yet. There's in here is Algolia, Heroku, and I put Contentful in without asking them. Uh, any other companies want to put their name in the hat? Bring it on. Who said bring it on? SendGrid. 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 Any other ones we can add? Oh. Alfresco. Is it, is it something I can do um, with my web development background skills? Because I don't know what Alfresco is. Yeah. Yes? OK, cool. Um, I really want to pick that one. <laughs> I think you just do Alfresco now. <laughs> I really don't know what it is. Don't worry. 
Hey, you volunteered. If this is going to go really badly, you know why it did. Okay. I'm going to leave it at that. So, Mike, please pick Heroku. Oh, <laughs> You know, I could just read out whatever I want, right? <laughs> That's a good point. Ah. Send grid. <laughs> For a <laughs> Send grid. Okay, so, you know, good round of applause for Mike for being fabulous. So, the three things I like to look at are, I'll highlight them for you already. The first one is exploration. And exploration to me means. Uh, does the experience help me to understand or try out that product before setting up an account? So, quite often companies seem to think like, you know, you already know what you want to do with that product, right? When you land on the website, which isn't necessarily always true. Um, so, as a developer, I sometimes, you know, I might have heard of a company. Uh, from another developer, word of mouth, you know, a lot of us are in word of mouth marketing, so how easy f is it for me to see how your product works without having to commit, right? At this moment, my motivation is really low, and I'm really not interested in giving you my social security number and everything else you need to, to sign up. So how hard would it be for me to understand? Um, so let's see, this is SendGrid. Um, so SendGrid.com, you know, I know they send emails. I've looked at them before. Um, I wonder what they do. Now, they send promotional emails with confidence, shipping notifications with confidence, uh, email newsletters with confidence. Okay, so I wonder what would that look like from a developer perspective. Let's see if I scroll down to SendGrid API. Great. Ah, here we go. There's a little bit of a code sample on the right. Great. Uh, I'm going to copy paste this and run this. Permission denied. Wrong credentials. Okay, so even though you know there is a sample there, it's not actually a sample I can run. It's not something I can actually play with. Um, I wonder if I could still get an experience of what that would look like if I did have credentials without actually signing up. So if I start to look at their sites, you know, there's you know, there's some Ruby, which is interesting. You know, it's good that they're kind of showing these code samples side by side, but that's nothing new for a company. But okay, what would that actually look like? So, you know, this starts to look a lot more like a marketing page at this point where Okay, so there's nothing here that allows me to right now really experience the product, right? This page is about the API, but it's not about the product. The product is, you know, fast email delivery. Uh, but how fast is it? I can't judge that from this without signing up. If I go to um, one of my favorite ones is Pusher, you know, you can go here, I can copy this curl sample, I go to my terminal and I, I want to show you in a way that is visual, and boom, the color changed there. That was me doing that. Now, that was an interaction where now I've got an experience not just about what they do, but how quickly that really goes. Um, Twilio does a similar thing where they'll have their, they have this page, which again, it's a, it's about SMS, and on the right-hand side here, they have, you know, in different languages, let me switch it to Node, because everybody writes JavaScript these days, right? <laughs> you know, there's the code there, and of course that code won't work unless I get an actual access token, or I'll get some actual um, things to work with. Um, but I can just type my number here on the right, type it in, and within three seconds, I get that, you know, that message that is written there uh, in the body, and that gets delivered to me, so even though, I didn't run that code literally. I still got an experience of how good the product is by combining that code with an actual interactive code sample. So, you know, good effort on having the code there. I'd love there's I'd love for there to be a way for me to actually use that to get, you know, get some experience of like 
what the product does, not just your API. How does the, the product is extended by the API? So let's sign up. Um, part two. Um, the second step to me is onboarding. And onboarding to me means, you know, how well does the product guide me from the main site, from that landing page I landed on, which often might not be the <laughs> main site, uh, to create an account and make that first API call or integration. And it's very important, I'm not talking necessarily about becoming a successful developer on this platform. That is, you know, there's a lot more about developer experience beyond, you know, that first integration. But, you know, how easy is it for me to make a, a valuable API call, uh, uh, not, not just an, uh, an hello world, but actually do something that really matters uh, using the API? And, and how difficult is that? So let's go and have a look. So let's sign up. Cool, simple, flexible pricing. I don't want to pay, but there seems to be really tiny, well obscured little link here, say try for free. I am going to try that. That is probably what I want to do. Uh, before, uh, that was a lot more hidden. That is definitely improved. Uh, trial. It's very clear that they're being upfront saying, look, this is a trial, but you're not paying something. I really like that. Um, Quite often, when I see certain sign-up forms, it's very unclear what I'm signing up for. It's like email address, name, that's, you know, password, that's it. And then, you know, I'm not sure whether or not I'm committing to anything at that point. Uh, so let's pick something, DevRelCon, like that. Um, really secure password. And let's just copy this. And then the convenience of having a uh, owning your own domain is you can make up as many email addresses as you want. So one of the things I like to look at is at kind of sign up forms and the idea of kind of cognitive load and like are these questions easy to answer and are they are they potential restrictions on on me actually signing up? Um, the Questions like that would be, you know, your name. Asking me for my name sounds really easy. You know, we all have a name, right? But does that need to be my legal name? Does that need to be my company name? Does that need to be, uh, especially if you've ever changed your name for whatever reason? Or if you're, you know, say, you know, I know, I know a lot of people from China have their Chinese name and their Western name. Uh, which one do you want me to fill in? Those are really difficult questions. The questions here are relatively simple. Um, the nice thing is this, this box here has kind of moved the question about what kind of pricing plan I have. They've just set it to a default and going, look, you have, you have the free one here. Um, they could have made that a question in the sign-up form, but then they would have to explain at that point what the different options were. Every other field here is pretty low on the um, uh, low on the complexity level. I'm not a robot, not yet. We're working on that. Okay, let's sign up. Okay, now we get to the interesting questions. <laughs> So these questions are clearly there for, you know, research reasons, for understanding. A lot of companies do these questions to ask you um, to get a profile of who you are so that they know what the developers are and then they can do better developer relations because they can better cater the product to you. The problem with these questions is at this moment, I don't know what these questions are going to be used for. Um, I don't know if I can change them. Like I said with the name, if I uh, have a different name in my passport, but I don't use that publicly, right? And I don't want to use that publicly for privacy reasons, I wouldn't know what to fill in there. If I fill in company name there, can I change that later? Uh, like if I'm just signing up as a developer to try this out, but I might want to use it for my company later, but I'm not sure yet what the company is called. Can I, can I change this later? These are a lot of questions that are quite high. And at this point, there is no way for me to skip this. There's no way for me to continue without providing you 
with all my valuable, completely correct data. Company website. Uh, what is your role? Okay, I love this question. Um, what is your role, developer, marketer, CEO, other? Great, if I, you know, I'm, I run my own company. Uh, I'm also a designer, I'm also a developer. If I say CEO, do I still get API keys? <coughs> I assume so, let's do it. Please choose one, because we all only have one hat. Um, <laughs> how do you plan to send email? I want to use your API. Uh, how many emails do you send per month? Personally or as a business? Uh, <laughs> how many employees? Okay, you know. Again, some of these questions, you know, might be really easy for you, but they're really complicated for other people to, 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 to work with. Okay. And now we get to the place where SendGrid before did a really, really bad job. Uh, they would end you up on a page where uh, they would just drop you on the dashboard with no further instructions. It seems like this has vastly improved. Uh, we can actually look at all the different ways to use their API. Um, send your first error email, verify your account. Um, I like this, the idea of um, clearly communicating to a developer what state your account is in. Even if you don't have a, the concept of a sandbox environment and a, uh, a live environment, quite often just you know, putting on it still saying, look, whatever you're gonna do now, this is live, can be really beneficial to developers. So let's see if I can make an API call. Let's choose the web API. Ooh, let's do Ruby. Because I know you all do Note, but I do Ruby. Uh, how to create and send an email. Make sure you have the prerequisites. Yes, I do. Create an API key. Why do I need to name my API key? Best key ever. Uh, Excellent. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. Okay, that seems a bit non-standard. I think we were talking about that before. Um, okay, so I want to send my email. So let's see if I can do that. So let's say, uh, you know, we're all here at, you know, at an event sponsored by GitHub, so I'm opening my Atom editor. Um, uh, uh, like that, yeah, and then we vim. <laughs> <laughs> and then I have problems with my vim. Why do I have problems with vim? Don't know. Okay, um. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's bundle that. I'm just kidding. I'm going to use Adam. Let's copy this. Okay. Let's see if we can make this work. It should be easy, right? Uh, let's send this to Cristiano at whoopee.io. Uh, uh, yeah, you are right. Thank you. Uh, sending with SendGrid is fun. OK, cool. And I'm just going to paste my actual API key in there because I'm lazy. All the best developers are lazy, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's fine, it's fine. Okay. Uh, bundle exec Ruby. Ruby uh, app. Ruby. Cool, got a 202. Let's see if we actually got the email. Um, doesn't mean I need to switch to my other email account. This is the confirmation email. Oh, sorry, I'm still on the wrong email account. Uh, everybody has too many email addresses, right? 
Sending good, sending good is fun. That worked. That was good. That is insanely better than it used to be. Okay. So the last thing I like to do is to look at the reference. So I've now done a thing, but I wonder how hard, you know, once I have my first green integration in place, how hard is it to find the full reference for what I just did? I've just done something, and I'd like to know how easy it would actually be to figure out what I just did. So if I go here and I go and look at SendGrid API new, and then I do client.mail, send, post, and then I post some data. So I want to see, like, okay, what, what were the inputs, the exact inputs, the exact outputs uh, of that API call? You know, you know things aren't good when I start them. Hmm. Am I missing it? No. Okay. So somehow the next step is to verify the integration. Uh, but that's not really what I want to do. So is anybody else seeing it? No. Sendgrid.com. Uh, documentation. Uh, oops. I saw it and then it went away. Documentation, web API. Um, okay. So I'm assuming mail sent means I did post mail sent. Although that is me assuming this because I'm you know, I'm experienced to understand that that's probably how that maps, but I can probably see, okay, here's the request body, these are the kind of things. So the two, we use the two to kind of send the email, um, the BCC, and there's the full kind of response schema as well. So not too hard, you know, I think Sangrit did pretty well there. I think there's some interesting stuff around the onboarding uh, that are uh, maybe unnecessarily complicated. Uh, and, you know, especially asking for data in a mandatory form means you're going to end up with a lot of mandatory bogus uh, because people will just fill it in because they don't know how to use They don't know what they're going to do with it yet. Um, the link to the documentation after making that first API call could have been easier. Could have been easier to just, you know, add that extra link and say, look, you've just done this. By the way, if you want to read more about this, here, meanwhile, if you don't want to read it, we'll take you on to the next step of what you logically should be doing. Um, thank you. I have a couple of extra things to add. Uh, the first thing is if you want me to uh, do something like this for your company and not post it online as a video, uh, I, I'm available for bri uh, bribes, uh, con contracting. Um, there's also a lot of the stuff, um, there's a couple of books that I really enjoy reading. One of them was this book, which I've used in many of my talks. Uh, I have it with me. It's a really cool book to kind of flip through and kind of read about different uh, kind of different UX principles and design principles. And they're, they're, they're really interesting. A lot of the, including kind of the um, cognitive overload that I, the cognitive load that I talked about. So that went actually pretty well, I think. So thank you very much. <laughs>